Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. For today's video we are going to be tackling a major project, renovating my sunroom. Ever since we moved into this house, this room has kind of been used as the catch-all room. So all of our projects, all of our traveling supplies, and any like extra cat things that we have typically fall in here, which stinks because it's such a beautiful room with so much potential, but it's always got junk in here. So no matter how much I clean it, it always gets dirty again. My thought is if I renovate it and make it beautiful and make it feel homey and cozy, we're not gonna be tempted to just throw random stuff in here. This video that I'm about to show you is the embarrassing truth of this room being the catch-all room. And it just, that's just, it is what it is. Sorry for that, but yeah. Just to note, that litter box is clean. I promise it's clean. It just has some dirt in it because it was a project that I'm not doing anymore. So to start off, I just want to give you a little bit of history on this room so you understand where we're coming from. My husband and I purchased this house about a year ago and the previous owner had renters who had big dogs that normally stayed in this room. So there's a lot of um, window frame wood damage where the dogs have chewed it up. The condo we live in is actually from the 70s but this room was not an original piece of the house. It was in addition to the house probably around 10 years ago. I'm not exactly sure what the purpose what this was intended to be if it was a patio or um, what well, I don't know so I'm not exactly sure what to call it but I'm gonna refer to it as a sunroom because that's cute and homey and because there's a lot of windows in here and it works as a sunroom. So you might hear me call it a patio accidentally throughout the video, but I'm gonna try to refer to it as a sunroom. Just know that I'm referring to the same room, no matter what I call it. Okay, so to start off this project, let's get everything out and shine this place up. Okay, so it is day two of renovating the patio area. Yesterday, I basically spent all day from like 4 p.m. till midnight um, just washing all the walls, getting all the dirt and grime off, uh, and doing all the windows. So that took way longer than I expected. So we didn't really have time to do anything else yesterday. But I did get a chance to start working on the wood damage. Um, so I started off by sanding all the affected areas down just to get any loose particles off. I've been using this quick wood putty, but I found that it dries really, really hard and I don't have the right kind of sander to actually work with it. I've just been using like a sanding block and sanding pa sandpaper. So it's, it's been really difficult for me to work with that. So I'm gonna try to uh, use some multi-purpose putty instead. For this project, I'm using Bondo all-purpose putty. For the molding process, I found that it was really helpful to put a lot of putty onto the affected area so that you could go back and cut off and sand off all the excess and carve it to the desired shape. The next order of business in renovating this patio area, I mean sunroom, is to paint this entire room 
a lighter color. So let's do that. So my main goal for this room is to make it sort of a sanctuary for me and my husband and for our two cats. Since we live in the city, we can't just let our cats roam freely. So my goal is to create a little cat grass bed to bring a little bit of the outside indoors for them. I purchased these cat grass seeds on Amazon, which are basically just wheatgrass seeds. These are the Thunder Acres wheatgrass seeds and they were about $10 on Amazon. If you're interested in this product or any of the other things that I use in this video, I can link them down below for you guys. So I'll show you how I'm going to do this in the next few clips. Here are our cat grass seeds right now. What I did was take about a cup of the seeds and soak them in water for a day. And then I drained all the water and let it sit for about a day to a day and a half, um, rinsing it twice a day just to make sure that there's enough moisture for the seeds to sprout. I'm gonna let them sprout for a few more hours and then, yeah, and then we'll plant them. So for the actual cat bed, what I did was just buy one of these uh, plastic containers. They were about $5 at the store. Basically what I'm gonna do is just line the bottom with rocks and then put dirt and, uh, and then the grass seeds and hopefully it'll be, <laughs> it'll act like a bed. They already like it, even without the cat grass. <laughs> Look at what I just found in my front yard. An air plant! So for the cat grass bed, I did purchase the plastic container like I showed you guys, but I wanted to make like a fr um, some kind of frame around it or something to put the container into that would just look a little bit nicer in this area. So to do that, my husband and I went to Home Depot and we found this beautiful nine foot slab of pine wood that was on clearance. So we actually got it for like $3, which is insane. So to make the frame of the bed, what we're doing is just measuring out how big we want the bed to be in accordance with the plastic container that we're using. And then we're cutting it up and drilling the pieces together. So once all the pieces were cut up and connected together, we did go through and sand down and cut off any sharp edges or anything that could be potentially harmful to the cats. Um, so all the like splinters and like pointy edges got sanded down. So if you decide to do this, make sure to do that because that could, that could really hurt your little babies. I recently purchased this really beautiful Dichondra Silver Falls. I have a spot for it inside. The only problem is this hanging basket um, does not have a bottom. So it would just drip all over the floor. 
I want to create something that will allow the basket to hang, but not allow all the water to seep out onto the floor. So let's see what we can do. After rummaging through the house, I found some frisbees. Um, my husband loves to play frisbee and he's got like a lot of them. I'm going to ask him which one he's okay with parting with. And then we're going to make this a little base for our plant. Yeah, we're gonna do a little DIY hack. I'm excited to see how this will turn out. To start this DIY, we need to sand off as much of the shiny coating as we can. This will help the paint adhere better to the plastic and make sure that it doesn't chip off. Next, you need to measure out where you want your holes to be. Ideally, you want it to be about an inch inside of the rim. Don't be like me and mismeasure the first time because then you'll have to go back and fill it in with putty and that's a whole disaster. Yeah, right there, like that. You don't want to be doing that. <laughs> So every time that I thought I was close to finishing this renovation, I'd come up with another DIY idea or find something else that I wanted to tweak. For example, like this little side table that just wasn't fitting in with the room, so I fixed it. It's amazing what a little bit of stain and paint can do. So now the sunroom is cleaned, painted, and all of our projects are complete, it's time for the final details. So after a numerous amount of DIYs and a long, long time coming, we are finally done with this renovation. The only thing left is the big reveal, so.
I absolutely love the way that this room turned out. Not only is it so beautiful, but it was extremely inexpensive. Ever since we finished it, I've come out here every single day, every morning, and I spend a lot of my time in here, so it's, it's perfect. I love it. If you like this video and this type of content, please feel free to subscribe because I do plan to do more content like this in the future. I'd love to know what projects you've been working on lately. So please leave a comment down below and let us know what you've been up to. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe and healthy. Bye. It's unsweet. Don't pretend like it's sweet. <laughs> for the video.